Assalamu alaikum. My name is Sister Gabrielle Muhammad, and the course that I will be teaching is Supreme Science, Physics, God is Force and Power. First of all, before I begin, I would like to give a few acknowledgments. First, starting off with Allah, who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. Also, I would like to thank the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farhan. And then I would like to thank my parents, Sister Deborah and Brother Daryl Muhammad. And I would also like to thank my siblings for teaching my parents how to raise Muslim children. So we, before we begin, I would just like to say a little bit about myself. So I am 24 years old. I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And starting from the beginning, I actually was a student teacher at Muhammad University of Islam here in Baton Rouge. And I was a student teacher by the age of 16. And also I am a Muhammad University of Islam graduate class of 2011. I have an undergraduate degree in mathematics and physics, and I have a minor, my degree, in my degree I had a minor in secondary education. And also, while I was in college, I actually conducted scientific research, I did national research and international research. And actually I did two international research opportunities, one in China and one in Ghana, and these pictures up here are examples and just some pictures of me when I was doing my uh, research in Ghana and also when I was doing my research in China. And both of those specific research opportunities had to do with sustainability and alternative energy. And so while I was in school, I've also studied Arabic, which I've studied since second grade, French, Chinese, Spanish, and Akan. And Akan is actually a dialect. It's actually a, it's actually a language spoken in Ghana. And the dialect that I learned was the tree dialect. So that was the part of Ghana we were in where they spoke that, that dialect. And also, I taught uh, physics and environmental science at Southern University Laboratory School. And in the future, inshallah, I will attend law school starting the next fall. Also, I, my goal is to practice international law. I see myself in the future speaking nine, language flu nine languages fluently. And I was actually inspired by Master Farad Muhammad himself and his, his ability to speak 16 languages, but I just settled for nine. And also, I want to travel to all six inhabited continents, not including Antarctica, but if I can go to Antarctica, that's fine too. So, a little bit about this course. The course objective is to give a conceptual understanding of force and power in physics as it relates to the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Supreme Wisdom. Okay, so you would ask, what is physics? Which is what I studied in college. So physics is the branch of science concerned with the properties of matter, matter and energy and the relationship between them. It is based on mathematics, which is an important note. It is based on mathematics and traditionally includes mechanics, optics, electricity, magnetism, acoustics, and heat. And so in this definition, it says that it's based on mathematics, but a better way to say it is that it uses the language of mathematics. And so the reason I say that is because Physics itself is a science, but it uses mathematics to quantify the, the physical phenomenon that we see. So physics, we try to understand it, but the only way we can understand it is using mathematics because mathematics is very precise, is very exact, and that's what you need to explain what's going on because the physical phenomenon that we observe is very precise and very exact, and the only language that we can use to understand what's going on is physics. I mean, it's mathematics. And so you might ask, why should I study physics? And so my answer to it will be found in Supreme Wisdom, actually in the problem, but in problem number 13. And so it kind of gives you, if you ask why you need to study this, this, this will give you an answer. So it states, after learning mathematics, which is Islam, and Islam is mathematics, it stands true. You can always prove it at no limit of time, then you must learn to use it and secure some benefit while you're living. That is luxury, money, good homes, and friendship in all walks of life. Sit yourself in heaven at once. That is the greatest desire of your brother and teacher. Now you must speak the language so you can use your mathematical theology in the proper term. Otherwise, you will not be successful unless you do speak well, for she knows all about you. The Secretary of Islam offers a reward to the best and neatest worker of this problem. There are 26 letters in the language, 
And if a student learns one letter per day, then how long will it take him to learn the 26 letters? There are 10 numbers in the mathematic language. Then how long will it take a student to learn the whole 10 numbers at the above rate? The average man speaks 400 words considered well. And so the reason I brought that up is because, just like I said, in the definition of what is physics, it uses mathematics as the language to explain physics. But in problem number 13, it states that mathematics is Islam, and Islam is mathematics. So if I interchange mathematics with the word Islam in that definition, it's saying that physics is based in Islam. Or as I said, that physics uses the language of Islam to, quant to quantify the physical phenomena. And so that's kind of what this course is going to do. We're going to quantify, but in the spiritual realm, the physical phenomena, we're going to correlate the physical phenomena or the physical reality with the spiritual reality that we find in the teachings. And we're hopefully going to use that, we're going to hopefully going to use that correlation to secure some benefit for ourselves while we're living. And so further to answer the question, why should we study physics? And I'll go back to the problem book. So in the introduction to the problem book, it states, this book teaches the lost foundation of Islam, a thorough knowledge of our miserable state of condition in a mathematical way when we were found by our savior, W.D. Fogg. And again, the problem book is telling you that it's, it's describing our miserable state in a mathematical way or in an Islamic way. And so if it's telling us that we can solve our problems, well, it's presented as a problem mathematically, that means that that problem can be solved mathematically or our miserable condition can be solved Islamically. And so the thing about it is that because it's mathematics, we can use physics and the relationships in physics, which deal with the relationship between matter and energy, we can use that type of thinking to analyze the situations that we're in and solve our problems using physics or mathematics or Islam, whichever, whichever you would say, because they all, they all are correlated. Okay. And so an overview for this course, we're going to have four lessons all together. And so in our first lesson, we're going to deal with the overall concept and a very kind of introductory, kind of basic overview of the concept of God is force and power. And so in that, we're going to start off kind of dealing with what force and power is, and then we're going to see how we're going to prove it at no limit of time that God is force and power. So it can, so trust me, it can be proven mathematically that fast. And so we're going to deal with that. So lesson number two is that we're going to deal with the laws of motion. And note that I didn't say Newton's laws of motion because Newton didn't create the universe. It's a law's laws of motion. But in order, the reason why I put this one here is because in order to understand force, you have to understand the laws of motion because we're going to deal with that in the lesson that without motion, you can have no force. So that's what that lesson is going to deal with. Lesson number three is what is force? And so in the first lesson, we kind of gave an overview of force. But in this one, it's going to deal with what is force and how exactly can we increase our force. And in this format, we're dealing with specifically our God force. So we're going to analyze what is our God force. You know, what is it made of and how can we increase our God force? And so in our last lesson, we're going to deal with net force because when we're talking about God force and manifesting our God force, sometimes we don't, we just think of it as us as, as a God exerting our force on a thing, but we're not really taking into consideration all the other forces that might be at play. You know, there might be opposing forces. There might be forces that add to your, to your force. So we're going to deal with net forces in play. And so in our lessons, we're going to deal with these key terms. So some of the key terms we're going to deal with and break down and parse and understand and really get a firm grasp on is force, power, work, mass, acceleration, time, and displacement. 
And so we're gonna we're gonna deal with those. We're gonna break them down, and inshallah, by the end of this lesson, you will have a firm grasp on these concepts. And then not only you'll have the firm grasp on them mathematically and scientifically, but you'll also have a firm grasp on them spiritually and Islamically. And so I hope you all join the class so we can go over those topics. So in closing, again, I would just like to thank Sister Deborah for giving me this opportunity. Um, thank everybody and hopefully you all enjoy in, enrolling the class. And when you do, you enjoy the class. And I'd like to greet you as I came. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you.